This is organic, but it's not organic. Let's talk about it. Fertilizer, hands down, has to be one of the most confusing things when it comes to gardening. And it's because there's a lot of misinformation out there. There's a lot of maybe fear behind some things. And today's video, I'm gonna give you a complete guide on organic versus conventional fertilizers, as well as the difference between granular soil amending fertilizers, liquids, granular liquids, and where you would use each one of these in a garden or a yard setting. Let's first off, off, start off with organic versus conventional. So this can be really obvious in some cases and in other cases it may not be as obvious. So an example of a conventional fertilizer would be something like the miracle Grow All Purpose. It's just a regular fertilizer, water soluble, and it doesn't state anything on the packaging as to it being organic. So this is just a conventional fertilizer. Now people get scared of conventional fertilizers and it is because if you over apply you can burn or damage your seedlings now it has less to do with salt and it has more to do with the nutrient concentration so I constantly push the concept of over application of any fertilizer whether it's conventional or organic can actually harm the soil microbiota just the soil nutrient balance and the plant itself and the yields that it provides while organic fertilizers may not burn they can still cause some disruption in our gardens or lawns so this is an example of a conventional non-organic fertilizer that will burn if you over apply but will not harm your plant or your soil if you apply appropriately next up is organic now you can get organic fertilizers such as this one where it says organic on it now what you want to look for for a true organic fertilizer is a statement on the label saying for organic agriculture use omnery listed is another way to do this or any certification within your com country that certifies that it's an organic fertilizer if you're marketing your produce or you want to really truly ensure it's organic then you want to look for those labels on the containers themselves now organic fertilizers don't have to be fish and compost and manures and we'll get into why compost and manure may not actually be organic they can actually come in the form of a dissolvable granular fertilizer such as this one. They can come in the form of a slow release fertilizer, which we'll talk about here in a little bit, or can come in the form of a liquid fertilizer in some cases. All of these are organic forms of fertilizer. Now, fertilizers that are dissolved in water, such as the granular dissolved in water or the liquid incorporated into water, organic or inorganic, is not a soil amender, meaning it doesn't do much for soil microbiota, soil structure, so the physicalities of the soil, but it does do something for soil fertility. So while organic, it doesn't mean it does anything for your soil. So what does? Well, the answer to that is actually compost and manure. So let's take a look at why that may not be organic but it is a soil amender. So down here, I have a giant bag or two giant bags of steer manure. Oh. <laughs> They're very heavy. Now this is organic, but it's not organic. <laughs> Oh, goodness. So this steer manure is an organic material. Yes, it's a byproduct of living material that's been decomposed by a cow gut and then further decomposed by a compost pile. However, if you were to grow in this, you would not be able to market the products as organic. <laughs> And the reason for that is because composts and manures that come from inorganic sources, such as cows that have been fed genetically modified corn or uh, pesticide laden alfalfa, not that there's anything wrong with that. I don't care what you do. I'm not dogmatic about any of this at all, but that by definition is not an organic steer manure. So when I read the packaging on this, it says nowhere on here is Omri listed and nowhere on here does it say for organic agriculture usage, meaning it's not certified organic and it likely is a manure from some form of feedlot or corn fed, whatever the case is. So there's nothing wrong with using this in the soil, despite the fact that it may have come from an inorganically grown cow, it's still valuable in the sense that it provides a source of nutrients, but it also provides soil amending capabilities, meaning it has a little bit of microbe food in there, maybe the introduction of new microbes, as well as physicalities that can help with the 
humus or the organic material within our soil, which ultimately helps with moisture retention and just overall soil structure. So I will be using this. I'm not at all afraid of conventional type stuff, but that is something that you may wanna watch out for if that's something you're trying to cut out of your life. So while organic, not organic. And the same actually goes for compost too. So it turns out for compost, if you have been composting in organic materials, then you technically don't have an organic compost. And the byproduct from that, again, could not be marketed as organic. So what this means in complete basic terms is that because I'm growing my plants in steer manure that is not at all OMRI listed or certified for organic agriculture, the byproduct material of that is an inorganic plant material. Now that inorganic plant material that's now being thrown into this compost is making inorganic compost. See, see how this is working? So this compost now is not considered organic, despite it being organic. There's physical benefits to this. There's micro benefits to this. There's nutrient benefits to this pile. And so because of that, I do use it and I don't get super hung up on the legalities, I guess you could say, of the entire situation. So when should we use each one of these fertilizer forms? When should we use a liquid granular dissolved or a liquid fertilizer? Well, you wanna use this when you water your seedlings, when you water your transplants, when you're looking for a direct nutrient source that is nearly immediate to that plant. When you use a compost or a manure, a more of a soil amender or probiotic or prebiotic, I guess, a two in one for your soil, you actually want to apply this in the spring. And if you're going for no till, you technically would just broadcast this. Or if you're not as concerned about no till, or you realize that digging holes is technically tillage, then you would actually just place it in the hole with the plant, or you would incorporate it into the top half foot or one foot, six, 12 inches of the soil surface where those roots are gonna contact. The reason why you would incorporate a compost or incorporate a compost of manure, and these have to be well-aged, keep that in mind. You don't wanna put fresh or fresh compost or manure in a garden, very important. It has to be aged, otherwise you'll end up with other problems such as nitrogen losses and just overall stunted growth of the plant. But the reason why you would incorporate this into the soil is because it will then amend the soil microbiology wise, as well as physicalities, moisture retention, and providing that nutrients to the root immediately. When we broadcast or we top dress with compost and manure, what ends up happening is we can end up with some volatilization or loss of nutrients through gassing off, as well as leaching through the soil system. So to avoid this, we incorporate it into that soil surface. If you're looking at a granular fertilizer, such as what you would use on a lawn or maybe a slow feed stake inside of a tree, these you would apply when you're seeing active growth. So right now's not a good time if you're in a colder zone three where everything kind of looks a little bit sleepy still. Around mid-June, you're gonna notice a big flush of growth or beginning of June, you're gonna notice a big flush of growth. And that's actually the time to fertilize with a slow release. Now, slow release simply means that it's coated in some sort of polymer and that polymer will degrade with sun, water, and just mechanical manipulation of surrounding environments to slowly release that fertilizer to the plant. Now, this is important for a crop that's going to be growing for an entire season or has been growing for an entire season uh, prior to. So that's why we would use that granular uh, or the stake type method. Now you can use a liquid on a lawn or a liquid on a tree. The only thing is that you wanna make sure that you're continually applying it through the entire year and you just don't wanna do one application. That's where granular can be slightly more effective or easier to manage. It's because it's a one-time application. But I hope this cleared up some things when it comes to gardening fertilizers because I know how confusing it can be and uh, leads you in a slightly better direction. <laughs> this is this is just a non, it's a noble steer poo. It's a no steer poo uh, assessment of fertilizer. Don't get dogmatic about it. If you want to go organic, go organic. If you want to go conventional, go conventional. Do what you're comfortable with. Do what you think works or what you know works in your garden and run with it. You'll be just fine, but just some 
misinformation that's on the internet may lead you astray in thinking you're organic when you're actually not. Just an FYI.